Hey, Shadow Raven, how's it going? First, right? <laughs> it's still saying zero viewers. It's lying. It lies. It lies. Yeah. Yeah, I decided I'd stream today. I decided I wanted to work on a bit of commission work, and so I was going to just talk to you guys while I did it. So, uh, and for some reason it didn't save my stream yesterday, so I'm recording this just in case I have a backup to put up on YouTube. So yeah, so we're going to do, we're going to do a thing. We're going to do, uh, let's see here. Let me get my OBS adequately adjusted. And go down to my commissar. You're in, you know you are one viewer. Right now you are one viewer. That's all we need, right? That's all we need. All you need is love. All you need is one viewer. That's enough, that's enough YouTube love or Twitch love. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna use, hmm, I wanna do the base and I wanna do her. And I think I want to mix a little brown into the base for the stone and go a little darker too. So let's see here. I think I'm just gonna mix some, uh, mix some walnut in. I could use a darker gray but I don't know that I have anything that's appropriate. Maybe use carbon. That's really dark. Hey there, Image. Yeah, totally works on pelts. Same kind of thing, Image. Uh, you'd, you'd still set it up with a wet blend. You'd have to figure out which um, parts of the pelt uh, or, or fur coat would... Uh, would be which parts of the animal. Like usually the back of the animal is kind of the back of the fur coat. And so it lightens as it comes to the front, but sometimes you got multiple pelts in a fur coat. So it depends. Most cloaks though. Hey, D. Clearman, how's it going? Yeah, fur is fur. I mean, the only time you run into weird stuff is if it is a fur coat and it's like, or a stole or something. And it's like a specific part of the animal and they're like several tails or something, you know, then you have to pay attention to how to paint the tail. She just wants to roll today. Maybe I should take her off the gigantic holding thing and uh, resituate the giant chunk of metal I have in there so she sits better. I think I have just some giant earth elemental chunk in here that I had in metal from eons ago. Will you, will you sit better now? Yeah, now she's good. Now she'll sit nicely. Good. Perfect. Yeah, I had to do some commission work. So I was like, let's do some commission work with people. That sounded pretty good to me. Although this AC is going to freeze me if I keep it on. So there we go. Let's not freeze it. Let's not freeze Anne. Uh, so the commission person. Hey, how's it going, Anthracia? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. As a cap. Yeah, the cap makes it hard, right? Because it's hard to get the eyes. Um, so like, yeah. And I left the eyes a little bit. I didn't like highlight up. I highlighted the cheekbone, but I didn't highlight more than that under the eyes. There's no highlighting on the bridge of the nose or anything. Um, and trying to get the eyes in there can be very difficult when you've got a rimmed hat on like this. Um, so, yeah, but she's, uh, I decided to go all NMM with her. And so I've got several steel parts to work on. I've got to work on the sword, gun, chest, breastplate. I've also want to block in the base at this point. Um, now that the client got back to me on what basing he wanted, so he's doing snow basing for his Imperial Guard. So I will be doing, uh, dark gray stone and then, uh, part of this is, uh, this installation piece is metal, so I'll be doing some of that in metal. It's kind of a weird base because it's like almost stone on one side and then it's not stone on the other side, so I'm not sure how I'm going to play with that, but at any rate, that's what we're going to do. So this is Severina, and she's uh, she's getting really dangerously close to done, actually. I have a lot of models getting dangerously close to done these days. It's like a whole new experience for me <laughs> with with previous experience being a uh, Reaper, uh, you know, like always getting dragged away from whatever models I was working on for Reaper. Let's see here. I want to make sure I fix focus. There we are. That will stay nice and in focus in focus. I actually like this model. I don't often take Games Workshop models uh, as commissions, but um, I do really like her. I like some of the detailing um, and I liked her leather. Uh, her black leather boots are real cool uh, and her coat. So yeah, overall, uh, overall, this is a, a pretty nice model from Games Workshop. 
Um, yeah, I do like them every once in a while, but, uh, but yeah, this, uh, this, and then the other one I'd worked on recently was the gene stealer, which is actually going to the same person. So I haven't mailed uh, the gene stealer off yet. Let's see here. All right. I have carbon gray. I have cloudy gray. I want moonstone blue to do my highlights on the breastplate, I think. And she has a couple of chips and slashes on there too. So I'm probably going to grab some walnut or brown liner. Maybe I'll grab brown liner actually. Brown liner for my um, kind of dingy dirtying up the breastplate a little bit. So we'll do brown liner. Why not? Brown liner, liner is, uh, I mean, it's a dark brown that's a lot like walnut, but it has a different, very different mix of pigments. And of course, it's in a totally different base. Um, so it's easier to do maybe slightly more subtle effects with brown liner, whereas walnut tends to be like a sledgehammer. Yeah, I did, Anthracia. When I was making my reputation on eBay, that's where the money was. So painted 40K and painted Warhammer was where the money was. So I did actually a lot of 40K. Uh, when I was starting out. A lot of Space Marine Commanders and, uh, you know, Eldar Phoenix Lords and stuff like that. Uh, the leader models were always the one. Black Templars, Salamanders. Hey, listening to Paint Dries. Yeah, I've been looking at, I've got a group of friends from, I'm, I moved out to California a few months ago, but my group of friends back in Texas who still are, uh, you know, are still working on their armies have been sharing all the latest news and everything in our chat group. So I, I do keep up with the game, even though right now there's no way to, for me to play or to, you know, our local game store is open, but it's not open for, um, for congregating. So, so I still have my Eldar. They're in the closet. <laughs> If I get into a group again, I'll start working on them again. Uh, but this is a commission, so uh, right now I'm working on her for. Uh, and actually, I'll get out since we're since we may pull a couple of Games Workshop fans since we're having that in the subject line. The other one that I did for this client is uh, he wants them done pretty much like the box art, but I did the Gene Stealer uh, Cult Patriarch guy, so that is like so. And he's pretty cool, just because I really like the the tiny little detailing on the back of his armor here. Let me focus, focus, focus on the gene stealer, please. There we go. All those tiny little lines and dashes on the back of the armor highlights, which is actually taken from the box art directly. So thanks. Thanks. Heavy metal painting team. <laughs> it took me forever. Um, but yeah, so he's uh he's cool. I've always been a fan of Tyranids. So this guy was super fun to do. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good time. But yeah, I have a couple of golden demons. So I'm, I, back in the day, uh, I was doing a lot of high end painting and I still like to paint my commissions to a pretty high standard. So yeah, that's Mr. Gene Steeler. He'll hang out. We'll keep him around. Um, but yeah, let's talk about, well, yeah, I did as an army, I did, uh, Tyranids. I started with Dark Eldar cause that was what the box set was at that time in Thracia. And then, uh, but they were a very finesse army and I wasn't very good at tactics. I never have been. Um, so they were a little bit too crunchy for me and, uh, I wanted, uh, I went Tyranids because I really liked the models. Um, I think they're cool looking and they're fun to paint. Uh, so I had a, like 120 gaunt army at one point. And then when I moved uh, away from Baltimore, I, uh, I uh, liquidated those, rehomed them with a friend who wanted a Tyranid army just because I, I was uh, moving on a pretty much on a shoestring. I didn't have a lot of room. Uh, so that was just a nice way to find a, a nice home for them. So let's mix up our paint. I want my cloudy gray. I need to decide. I probably need to refer to her box art to see what they painted metal on the base. Hmm. Cause they did do a bit of, uh, they did do a bit of metallics on the base. You can see it, but I'm just puzzled as to why the edge here then looks like stone. It looks like they painted even the broken edge like metal. So I should probably do that. Just kind of look in it, how they did it. Yeah. It's interesting with GW. Sometimes on basing, you just never know if it's metal or stone. And a lot of the times I'll paint it like stone. And then I'll run into things like rivets <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the tail positioning. Yeah, well, you know, that's Tyranids for you. Uh, hey, Daffodweer, how's it going? 
Yeah, so I want to make, I, I definitely want to differentiate between areas that might be stone and areas that are metal. So I was thinking I was going to use um, carbon gray, which is a very dark gray for the stonework, quote unquote. Uh, he also wants it to be a snow base. So going with a darker gray stone for the base work, I'm going to actually move my camera up a little bit because it's a little crammed with this big miniature holder here. Let me move up and then we'll focus in again. Look at that. We're still pretty good. Just got to focus. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. A oh, little bit out of focus now. I should have focused the other way. There we are. Much better. Um, but yeah, because it's going to be a snow base, I want the stone to really stand out against that. And so I'm going to start with a darker gray base coat. That way I can highlight it up or all around the edges and, and things, um, but it'll still be nice and stand out against the, uh, it'll stand out against the snow. I'll have to ask him what snow basing stuff he's, where he's uh, using. So I make sure I match it. Oh, that's cool, Gertie. Yeah, I was kind of like back and forth on whether I wanted to stream this afternoon, but I knew I wanted to get some work done on this model. And so I was like, why not? I mean, if I'm going to sit and work on commissions, unless David has a meeting in here and he doesn't want me babbling, uh, there's really no reason not to. Yes. Oh, I thought I heard a, a, a knock, but it was just an opening of a pantry door. But yeah, so no reason not to hang out really. And it gives me like a, you know, a good hour. I'm going to base coat this and then I'm going to go up and do some NMM on the, just on the breastplate and stuff. But I'm getting to, the you get to the point where the, much of the model is base coated and you're kind of annoyed with the areas that aren't at least base coated for the rest of it. Um, I'm kind of at this point with this model. So I'm like, all right, I must actually paint the stuff that's not at least painted with one coat. Then I can move forward. Yeah. See, this is so much like stone. I guess there's stone and then there's metal. I guess I could paint it. There's like kind of this craggy stony stuff that's up against the side of the thing she's got her foot on. I guess I could paint them like different things. I think I will. I have some liberty. Since he wanted NMM instead of uh, metallics in the first place. Hello, Danny V. Uh, fantasy 40k thank you for following me yeah i do a whole bunch of stuff on here not just uh warhammer but i uh have some commissions that are warhammery and so you will see me from time to time painting games workshop on here i work for reaper miniatures the rest of the time so uh i do their stream in the morning they do mostly dungeons and dragons style figures um for uh role-playing games but yeah i paint a whole i paint a lot of everything and I do have some Games Workshop of my own. And now if uh, if the virus will just be off, we'll have Golden Demon Candy Competition again. And I definitely want to uh, start painting my entry for that. So maybe this will be... I've told people I'm going to work more on high-end models on this stream. So I uh, very well might... You might end up uh, watching me paint some of my Golden Demon entry. But uh, there's a couple other... Nice models I've been working on, too. So we're just going to block in this in a dark gray. Oh, good. Well, it's nice to meet you, Danny. Yeah, I, I stream on Reaper Miniatures Twitch in the morning from 11.30 Central uh, to around 1 p.m. Central. So people people watch me while they eat lunch. Uh, we do a lot of kind of intro stuff on that, although I do do... Well, let's see. What's a Reaper model I did recently? Ms. Wraith is here. She's... Let me see where you... There you go. So I was doing her like she was becoming corporeal or uh, starting to ghost out. So there's an example of a Reaper model that I did recently on stream to kind of talk about how you, like, you do that whole, like, becoming corporeal uh, ghost effect. Um, yeah. Hey, Eowok. So yeah, let's get this base get this base just blocked in, and then I'll work on the steel. Just really want to feel like I'm even closer to done. You like there are commission models that are just nice models, and so it's fun to paint them. But there comes to a point in every commission where you're just like, okay, I want this over with, so I can move on to the next thing. I have some dark sword models that I need to get on uh, Targaryens from Song of Ice and Fire. 
And those are going to be interesting. I might do a video for my Patreon on painting their tiny little faces because they're uh, Tom Meyer sculpts and they're very delicate. And sometimes it can be really hard to do those eyes when they're really tiny. There we go. Well, at least I've blocked in, blocked in this in dark gray. Thanks for the Patreon plug, Gergi. Yes, I just put up, for those of you who are my patrons, you'll have noticed I just put up um, how to paint a wolf fur tutorial just like less than an hour ago you can tell i was working um right over my lunch hour that was a hard video to do i don't know sometimes you try to video a tutorial and it comes together just like instantly and it's brilliant and it's great and you're like yes this is exactly what i wanted to teach and sometimes you try to teach a subject and it just seems like you're all over the place and you're not like you get distracted by techniques that you didn't want to cover and uh the wolf fur tutorial was like that. I had to shoot it three separate times. I know what it's, and it's weird because it's a topic that, that I've done before. It's, it's a technique that I do a lot. And so it's just weird that I, I didn't feel like I quite nailed it until the last run. All right. Well now at least we've got our base mostly blocked in and this big thing is metal. So I can block that in, in my uh, basic non-metallic metal gray, which is cloudy gray, of course, 9089. Hey, it's Liquid Nebula. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, dinner hour for a lot of people. I mean, out here in California, it's, of course, earlier, so I can... I have to... At the end of this stream, I have to pretty much let my dog out, feed her, and then start on dinner, so... I'm just a little bit later than you guys. So Cloudy Gray is a medium dark gray. It's looking quite light next to... Uh, this uh carbon gray because carbon is a very it's a charcoal gray it's really dark but it is a decent medium gray for this sort of thing for for starting coat on steel i like to start a little on the darker side with steel and uh, not on the lighter side i find it a lot easier to blend down to my darks because when you're doing non-metallic metal and silver and steel your darks are usually so small that I find uh, it's actually harder to blend down to those and make them as small as I need them. Um, harder to do that than to bring up the highlights. And so that's why I start with a slightly darker gray. If I get a little schmear here, I don't so much mind. Um, because I like, uh, I like to be able to blend that shadow in. So yeah, this is the same gray. It'll dry a bit darker. It'll dry darker like it is up here. Although it may look a little lighter being up against a uh, thing like this. But we're just blocking in as fast as we can. Just want to get this all settled. The little wire or tube there I'll make red probably so it'll go with the rest of her. So I suppose I could make it green and uh, go complimentary. Never hurts. For the most part, for this client, it's, uh, hey, hey, evil twin, thanks for following me. Uh, but yeah, for most part, for this client, he wants uh, stuff painted more or less like the box art. Um, but uh, I have a little bit of leeway, like, you know, the color of tubes and things he isn't going to quibble on. He just wants it more or less painted like the box art. He's a decent painter himself. He does a lot of work with the airbrush, but he doesn't really do stuff like non-metallic metal. So when he has a model that uh, either takes a lot of uh, a free work of like tiny work, like Mr. Uh, Mr. Tyranid here. Hey, War Mini Painting. Thanks for the follow. Um, so for the Tyranid here, this such all this little tiny, uh, tiny brush work that I had to do on the carapace, like that's beyond him. So he does a, a, a really good... My client does a really good, like, kind of airbrush, you know, base, uh, you know, solid highlight. He does he does really good looking stuff himself. But when it comes to the leader models with doing, like, the non-metallic metal or doing uh, doing very fine detail, that's where he doesn't really feel like he's got the control and he uh, pays me to do stuff for him instead. Yay. All righty. So we've got that blocked in. Let's go up and talk about this breastplate here. And I've got to do silver on the gun, or steel. Uh, silver or steel on the breastplate. It's pretty much the same. Silver and steel with doing non-metallic metal is exactly the same thing. So you're going to be, you know, maybe with silver you make it a little lighter. 
uh, and maybe your shadows don't stay as dark, just to suggest that that lighter, shinier color. Um, but in general, it's it's very similar. So we're sitting here, and we've got some dents in there that I may want to block in right away so I don't uh, forget them. Let's see here. I've got some brown, really dark brown. I may also just want to start on the highlights and block in those dents later. So for her highlight on the top of her breastplate, I'm going to go with a pale blue color because I want to kind of... Uh, do a little bit of a sky reflection. So there's my palette. I do use a well palette rather than a wet palette because I like to control my paint consistency. Uh, that lets me do very fine details uh, with a lot of control, which I really appreciate. So this is Moonstone Blue from Reaper. Um, all my paints are Reaper because uh, for those of you who may not know me, uh, I used to work for Reaper Miniatures and I actually created their Master Series paint line. So I am the paint lady. Uh, so my paints that I tend to use are Reaper paints, but um, yeah, I actually worked for Games Workshop a long time ago too, so I'm familiar more with their old paint line than with their current paint line. Although I've tried, I go in and I try out their stuff. I went in and tried out the contrast paints um, back when they came out and good job GW. That's actually GW doing a good job uh, doing something that not many other miniatures companies could do. The base for the contrast paints, being, being a paint creator, um, seems very uh, unique to me. And not a base that would be, like, it's a base that you have to, like, create if you have your own paint chemistry department. Um, and uh, so you can tell that they're working with a company and that they pull out a volume to do a very specialty product. Those contrast paints are very unique. So good job, GW. On, on, and, and really, I mean, a lot of painters I know really like them uh, for faster faster work, especially. And we all know when we're painting armies, we are not sitting here and doing non-metallic metal on every model. Just the, just the fancy people. Just the fancy people get NMM. So I'm just trying to make it a little lighter at the top to start with. I have to decide where my shadow is going to come in. Um, though I'm just kind of blocking in, keeping track of where my dents are. My paint's a little thick right now, too, so I'm not getting great blends. So I'm going to add a little more water. Uh, when you're trying to do smooth blending, if you're not just doing wet blending, using thinner paint is really where it's at. I'm going to thin down my gray a little bit more. I'm going to look at my brown liner. So on a breastplate, usually you're looking at a lot of light falling and you can even see it right now on the camera. You can see light falling more at the top. And then usually it starts to go down. Often it'll have like a secondary shadow if you look at her box art. And they've done it in metallics, but that just means it's reflecting realistically. But they've got this, see it goes to dark over here. And it kind of has a bit of a dark shadow here and then a little bit more of a highlight. And the main highlight is right here down the middle. So that's what we're going to be replicating in paint. And we're going to try to make it look shiny. So to do that, we need to make sure that we have our pure white open also. Also, for those of you who have not met me before who are new to the stream, I explain everything. <laughs> I'm really, uh, even though I'm technically just hanging out and working on my own commissions, and uh, I also, I just like to teach. It's kind of habitual. So I will explain what I do, and if you have questions, feel free um, to ask in chat. I do try to keep an eye open. Hi, Insanely Handsome. Wow. <laughs> That's a great name. Ah. Yes, yes, I explain a lot. So if you are not used to people like talking all through their streams, um, I guess there are so many painters who, well, when they're working on commissions, they just kind of hang out and chill, right? And just work. And I, and I totally get that. But sometimes explaining is, uh, it just kind of helps me crystallize my process too. And if it helps you guys figure out how to do something, then it's good for both of us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm a chatty. I'm a chatty Twitch person. I actually, as I was mentioning before, I, I work for Reaper Miniatures. So normally I'm uh, painting um, 28 millimeter, uh, you know, D&D, &D, uh, Dungeons and Dragons models for them. Or I'm doing, you know, um, my own my own stuff tends to be bigger. I tend to work on stuff like this big uh, samurai bust that I've been doing for with a with another client that I'm coaching. So that's another example of stuff that I do. So it's much larger, of course, um, that sort of thing. 
So yeah, I do a bunch of stuff. You can expect if you come over and hang out on my stream that I will be doing a bunch of different stuff. So we want that highlight, remember, down kind of the middle of the armor. So I'm just going to take some pure white and I've thinned it a little bit, but it's still pretty rough. I just want to block in kind of where my highlight's going to be. I can worry about smoothing it out later. Um, I don't know that I want it to go down all the way down the front of the breastplate. I kind of have to look at the angle of the breastplate. And it seems to me like it's pretty straight up and down. So I guess, yeah, then if it is, then we do want to take it down more or less toward the bottom. If the breastplate um, kind of like cut out and then cut under, like kind of went out, out and back like that, then we definitely would have an area where it cuts back, where it loses the light. And then you'd put a dark shadow in that area. But hers here is pretty straightforward, so... We are going to just run with it and make a highlight that goes pretty much down. I'm going to make it a little broader at the top um, just because of the shape of the breastplate. So we've got that and we are going to get, let me see if I can get a little closer so you guys can really see. And let me get her in focus one second. I love my camera and it can get very, very tight and that's why I love it. So we're going to get really tight. There we go. There we are. Much better. And my color comes back to normal. Fantastic. All right, so you see how I'm blocking in that white, and it is not, it's still pretty brushy, pretty streaky. Um, this one, Insanely Handsome, it's a, it's a Games Workshop model, so I'd say it's probably a 30 millimeter. Their models tend to be just a little bit bigger. Like, if I look at this Reaper Wraith next to the Commissar, she, if I, the Reaper Wraith is up on some stuff, and she's got, well, there, I guess they're about, so I'd say, yeah, 28 millimeter-ish. The proportions tend to be bigger. Games Workshop uh, stuff tends to be a little blockier and bigger in general and proportion. But yeah, about that. 28 to 30. So standard like D&D model uh, scale. Gaming scale as they call it. Uh, all right. Uh, gold is not true metallic metal. It's actually NMM Jetta. Teaching and random topic shifts. That's my guess. This is my uh, specialty. Although today we're we're kind of on top. But uh, oh, burgers. Oh, chicken Alfredo burgers. What's everybody having for dinner? I'm making steak. It's steak tonight. Where I channel the fact that I lived in Texas for 17 years to make a an awesome ribeye. That's like if I learned nothing else living in Texas, it was how to properly make steak. And this was a very nice looking ribeye. I, normally I make my save versus ribeye, but these were very good looking. And they were on sale. I couldn't pass it up. And there's the random topic show. <laughs> yes, steak. Well, okay, you know, Shadow Raven. It's not a Twitch stream unless you're talking about food. I mean, come on. I watch Overwatch streamers all the time. And at least a couple of the ones that I watch, like food inevitably enters the, uh, the conversation. So you cannot tell me that the random topic shift to food is not a standard on Twitch. I know, right, Jetta? I actually like this model for that. I like the Games Workshop didn't give her the boob plate. Let's see, she's got a couple of little uh, dings and dents in her armor. I'm going to just kind of suggest those a bit. Thank you. Yeah, um, it is NMM. Uh, because on anything like this with these super fine, tiny little details, like, I mean, like, seriously, the tiny little gold braids and all that. Here, let me see. There we go. So you can see the tiny little gold braids. Anytime you're going to be painting something with this amount of, uh, of tiny details that need to be done in gold or silver, I really feel like NMM is the way to go because you can hit all those details and make them all stand out. It's so hard with metallics to do that because the light's going to catch it unpredictably. So sometimes it, it, uh, it, I just feel like it, NMM is the way to go when these tiny little things like these tiny little eagles with their wings and the breastplate, it really is, uh, there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to take some of my moonstone blue. It's just a pale blue. Um, and I'm going to bring that out into this highlight a little bit. It's thinner than the white, and uh, it's going to blend it in a little bit. And putting this in here, the purpose is essentially to suggest sky reflection, 
what it does is it, if you don't put some other color into your uh, silver or steel NMM, you tend to get in this situation where it looks almost like a black and white illustration. I actually had that happen to me with a model that I painted for Dark Sword. And uh, so now I always put a little bit of something into the highlights and shadows, sometimes both. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a shadow here, shadow color, and come up on the side. And remember the other side of her breastplate also had a shadow color when we looked at her box art. So we're going to put those shadows in. I'm using brown liner for this. It's a Reaper color that's uh, a little more transparent and uh, a little more fluid. It's It tends to make dark shading a little easier because it's transparent. It's made to be, uh, it's made to be for lining. So putting the dark line between all these, like the little dark lines I have between all of these things. Yeah, we're done with liner. Um, they're made to be uh, a little bit more fluid so that you can use them that way easily. You don't have to thin them down too, uh, too much to get there. All right, so now a little, uh, little shade over here. Now, how close your highlights and shadows are to each other and how quick the transition is from one to the other will determine how shiny this uh, surface looks. So I don't necessarily want this. We're not looking for chrome here. We're looking for, you know, a fairly shiny breastplate. But obviously she's been in fights, you know. This, this breastplate has been through a bit. So... I don't want too sharp of a transition. I want maybe to bring a little bit of my cloudy gray back and uh, interrupt that dark line and maybe blend my white in a little bit more. Maybe shrink my highlight just a tad. Just doing tiny little brush strokes here to try to tune it. So we'll start with the basic, but then throughout this process, I'm always evaluating, does it look right? Is it starting to look shiny? Um, the basics of non-metallic metal are that you need to have a very close to white highlight, if not pure white, and on steel it should be pure white. Um, and you need to have dark shadows uh, laid down that are essentially where the light moves away from the eye. Because what you've got here, if you think about what shiny is, it's just this metal is pointed toward your eye right at this area and it's flashing toward your eye. So that's where your pinpoint highlight comes in. <laughs> you don't have to make one sense. It's the death chicken, Jetta Rose. It's the, it's the Games Workshop death chicken. The double-headed death chicken uh, is what my friends used to call it. And they played Space Marines, so they could, make, they could make fun of it. I have always been a Xenos kind of girl, I'm afraid. Dark Eldar, Tyranids, Space Orcs, Eldar, those have been my armies. I did actually have Space Wolves at one point, just because I really love their iconography. Because I'm into wolves. So now I'm going to bring up just a really sharp... I want a really sharp white highlight here. If the if the breastplate's going to be reflecting really strongly anywhere, it's going to be like here at the front and top. And the brighter I make that, the more shiny things are going to start to look. Then I can take more of my gray. And remember there, uh, if you look at her, you can see even a little bit of a shadow going down here, and then it comes up a little bit, a little bit more of a highlight toward the edge here. So you've got highlight, shadow, highlight, and that's that's a metallic on that model. And so what we're doing is we're simulating that with non-metallic paints, and we do it this way because it gives us more control. Um, and and in this case, the client has paid for it. <laughs> it gives us more control, and the client paid for it. Yeah, I mean, Space Wolves are fun. And honestly, um, I think the, the Space Wolf grays from the dark gray to the pale blue gray are really easy to blend. Like, they're, they're some of the, the easiest colors. Uh, grayed out colors tend to be very, very easy to blend. And so I think that um, I always found Space Wolves fun to paint and simple to paint because of that factor. Let's see, we're going to add up some white here. The other thing we could do is even add a little bit of red into our steel where it comes up next to her lapel here because the steel would probably reflect a little bit of that if you think about it since that uh, that fabric is right next to it. So now we've got a little bit of a highlight there. And that all the, what this does together is, of course, you know, and, uh, talked about this a lot this week with NMM Gold on the Reaper stream. But you want shiny and you want reflective. Those are the two qualities of metal. And so those are the two things that you're reaching for when you're trying to do this. 
And the shiny is achieved by putting your darks next to your lights here and having kind of the dark and light banding effect. And your reflective is putting these secondary highlights out toward the edges of the model and then making them reflect colors from the environment or just reflect light by making them lighter. Oh, thanks, Rex. Awesome. I'm glad you found me through. And you have a Pikachu icon. You have a Pikachu emoji, which, you know, I actually have a, I have a Pikachu mouse pad around here somewhere and uh, various stuffed Pikachus planted in various places in my apartment because there is uh, there isn't a lot that's happier than Pikachu. <laughs> Everyone has a Pikachu emote. Awesome. Well, welcome. It's good to, to meet you. Yeah, I hang out and I paint things. And today I'm, I'm painting Games Workshop, which is uh, weird for me, but commissions must get done. So I'm going to put another highlight over here. And this is a slightly rounded surface. Oh, wow. Giggling Geekette is hosting us. Well, thank you, Geekette. Hello, Geekette stream. Anybody who's watching. I'm Anne. I'm from Reaper Miniatures. And we are currently painting something that's definitely not Reaper, but uh, something that Anne needs to get done. Hey, again. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, hi, Giggling Geekette. It's good to see you. Thanks for the host. I appreciate it. We are uh, working on a female commissar, trying to do some NMM on the breastplate to make it look right. And it's a little bit of a weird shape on the breastplate, so I'm fighting with it just a tad. But those are the streams that are most instructive. So when the mini is fighting with you is when you learn things. And I think I need to grab just a little, because I've got the right... I've got this the right shape here. See how I've kind of rounded out the shadow and the highlight? You want that because this is kind of a rounded bracelet. It has a little bit of a curve to it, both um, both side to side and top to bottom. And so I want that to look curved, and I think I've missed it a little bit over on this side. So I'm going to kind of take my shadow color and bring it back in over here and try to even this out and make it look a little bit more like what I want. And it may be just that I don't get as strong of a high, uh, secondary highlight on that side as I do on this side. Because here her arm is back, so her coat is open more, so you're seeing more of the breastplate. Hi, Mikat Dog. Thanks for the follow. Oh, he howdy, howdy, everybody. Oh, you found your druid stone diorama. Yeah, that's a classic. That is an old piece. I always loved that piece of art by Parkinson, Keith Parkinson. Love all those old D and D artists. I am a Larry Elmore fangirl for sure. I have his uh, his giant books that he kickstarted a couple years back. Yeah. All right. So that's a little better. So now I'm starting to get a little bit of that reflection coming in. I can make that a little lighter. You never want your secondary reflections to be as bright as your main light source. So if our late, main light source is going straight down the front here, which is what I'm kind of suggesting with all my other highlighting, then I definitely uh, want these secondary light sources to be a little more dim. So we can go up to a pretty pale gray, but we just don't want to go up uh, toward to the pure white. You never want to make it quite as bright. But the more light you put in in your secondary reflections the more um the more real the more reflective the metal will get like you can see the light catching now right so that's coming along actually really well yeah i, I love elmore in general like when jim uh, at dark sword started doing larry's uh pieces in miniature form i was like on it <laughs> and larry likes my painting like there is nothing more gratifying guys than being a larry elmore fangirl since you were nine and picked up your first D D book and then meeting him when you're in your 30s and 40s and having him say that he really likes the way you paint miniatures. His miniatures. Like, that is one of my, like, I'm such a, I had such a fangirl moment. I don't fangirl many people, but oh my gosh, yes, I had such a fangirl moment there. Back when I was doing, I was doing box art for, for Dark Sword at the time. When Jim started uh, essentially having a... Uh, Larry and then later Stephanie Law uh, share a booth at Gen Con with him. But yeah. Oh yeah. I really like, um, what is it? Is it Ravenstone? 
with the lady, the druidic lady in the long cloak with the uh, with the standing stones and the ravens. I really loved that one. But yeah, so Larry Elmore likes my miniatures, guys. I can die happy. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was like a, definitely a peak of uh, kind of me like going, uh, kind of I guess a, in a way it reinforced my style. In a lot of ways, my painting style is a lot more naturalistic, um, and not so much maybe on this figure, uh, which I'm definitely painting to look like the box art. Um, but in general, when I paint, I tend to go more subtle, more naturalistic, less poppy, less. Uh, less cartoony. Uh, I tend to think a lot about realism and, and making a model look more real, even if it's like a little 28. Um, and that's different from a lot of painters out there. And so, uh, there've been times like that. I really am like, well, I seem to be doing it different than everybody else. Um, and, uh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing it my way. Uh, but Little things like that, where like a, a 2D painter looks at my stuff and is like, oh, I like your work so much more than this other guy. He's too cartoony. You know, you are you really get it. And then, yeah, that was that was worth its weight in gold for me, really, at that time of my career. Um, but yeah, I always liked, I always like subtlety in paint jobs. I love Easter eggs. I love putting little details in that maybe people don't see right away. But then later on, they're just like, when they get real close, or maybe they look at it a second time, they're like, oh my God, I didn't even see that the first time. And oh my God, that's what I love. That's, uh, I really enjoy doing that with my work. And, uh, and doing, hitting all the tiny little things. There, we're gonna, gonna raise this, uh, get rid of this dark shadow under the breastplate a little bit. We still want a little line there, but I really want that. That's looking good. Now, if anything, we may have gotten a little too round. And this is an excellent example of, of the shape of your highlights and shadows can really suggest volume that maybe isn't there. Like, if we look at her breastplate, it is pretty up and down. It definitely curves from side to side. It has more of a side to side curve than it has an up and down curve. But I've made this, I've painted on this highlight that's very round. And so it is reading like it's more of a rounded overall breastplate. So you can create like faux effects, like effects that even aren't really there. You can suggest just by the shape of your highlights sometimes. Uh, C and C on the channel. C and C. I don't know what C and C is. I'm a very new Twitch person. Justin at Reaper has had to hold my hand for a lot of this. Explain C and C Rex for me. Yeah, definitely giggling geek cat. There is that too, right? Like, cause, okay. Yeah. I love naturalistic painting. Oh, constructive criticism. I haven't thought about doing that, but maybe I should. That's a great idea. Oh yeah. I guess people could send, you know, photos and, and we could do like a coaching kind of thing. That's just live. That's a great idea. Dang. I guess other people are probably doing that and I just missed out, <laughs> but thanks Rex. I'll make a note on that. Actually I will. I'll make a direct note on that. Grab my sticky notes because I live by my sticky notes. And do uh, C and C. And then I'll remember. But yeah, like, uh, as I was saying, you get, uh, I, I love my naturalism, but then I'm dating David Diamondstone, and David does, like, the dramatic lighting and all this. Like, his stuff is crazy. It It's beautiful, though. And so now it makes me want to go that way instead of going my way that I've been going for all these years, right? So, uh, yeah, but the constructive criticism and comments, that would be, that would be fun, actually, I think. Oop, my brush definitely had a moment there. Yeah, it is a good idea. We'll have to plan out how to do that. I have a Patreon, and of course I'm on Reaper, so maybe we'll have to get together with the communities in my various places, because now I'm on Twitch, and uh, figure out a way to do that. Because I certainly don't mind. I, um, I'm a judge at Reaper's, uh painting competition at ReaperCon, although this year it's virtual, so we won't be having quite that same thing. But uh, I've also judged a lot of painting competitions over the years at Gen Con and Origins, back when Origins had a decent painting competition. I don't know if they do now. I haven't been for a long time. So there. So now I widened out this highlight. Now it doesn't look nearly as like bulbous, right? It still has a little bit of roundness to it. <laughs> Probably because I don't, uh, I don't want to get totally distracted right now, Rex. 
because I I am trying to get some commission work done. I'd I'd much rather have kind of a uh, kind of a sign of time for that one. But uh, I could go and glance at it. Just give me a, give me some time to like uh, pop a pop a couple of like figure out this breastplate. Maybe minimize this curve, and then maybe we can go over and look. And I can give you a quick quick assess. Hold on. Yeah, most of the time, if I, uh, the Twitch streamers that I tend to follow, well, at least in the gaming, um, market, uh, seem to do like a, hey, let's get a sub goal and then I'll do a, a coaching thing and uh, assess you guys playing and all that stuff. So that might be something we try. We do need another 13 subs to open up another remote slot, uh, remote slot. Although I think we have enough remote slots to have my, um, my happy dog face. From my dog is currently sleeping, so you cannot see her happy dog face right now, but that's gonna be one of the emotes. Well, thank you, Alpha Zero. <laughs> well, that's one. That's one toward it, right? That's awesome. So yeah, maybe um I should do that. When we get we're at, I think we're at I need to look at it. We're at 39 subs, I think. And when, if we get to 50, then maybe I'll do a couple of streams that are just coaching on people, it's just giving you constructive feedback on some of your stuff. That sounds actually really good because that way um, I, I'm much better if I know I'm headed into a coaching session. I can kind of prepare some examples, uh, grab some of my models that I've done over the years and use them to kind of illustrate points. It's hard to do that when I've got this model. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, and thanks. Yeah, thanks for the prime sub. Sweet. Uh, just sub only streams. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I'm thinking Giggling Geek at, because I really, um, I would want to definitely have example models uh, to do it with. That said, one second. That's really good NMM, Rex. Like, if anything, I think just a little more blending your shadows. Blending the shadows in, it's always the hardest part, especially when you're doing a really pale NMM like that. But the blue NMM's looking good. Your uh, shadow and highlight placements uh, seem very realistic to me. Um, and you've got the under reflection, the fade away, and the edge looks great too, actually. Yeah, it's just a little bit of the blending on that, uh, on the darks, I think. And it can be rough when you're doing, I mean, silver, is, silver and steel at MM is the hardest, right? Because you're going from pure white to pure, pure black almost. And that's the hardest blend ever, especially when you're doing repeated times, um, during the, uh, during the course of like, say over a breastplate or over a, a, as I was looking at the arm guard on that model that you did. But yeah, I like, I really like the blue metal though. That's pretty snaz. Bluish teal. It's hot. But yeah, that's a, it's, it would be good. Maybe when, um, that's a good thing. Get to 50 subs and do, do cr critiques, constructive critiques. That sounds pretty good. That would be a fun, like sub goal thing. On the Reaper channel, I do AMAs. Um, actually we've got one, uh, for tomorrow. So if you guys are free at 11.30 a.m. Central USA time tomorrow. Um, I'm doing uh, the AMA, and we're doing a giveaway with it as well. We're going to be giving away one of the big Reaper Dragons uh, in Bones Plastic. Because they're... Uh, the Bones is pretty good when you're dealing with big stuff. It makes it a lot less expensive for the consumer. And they still look really good. Oh, no, Blorf! That little tiny spark of Blorf. We'll rub it off. Hopefully I got it fast enough. If not, I'll have to touch it up. Yeah, I'll touch it up. Blorf. Blorf is a technical term. Blorf means Anne has put her brush in the wrong place. Yes. Yeah, silver NMM is really, is difficult. Yeah. Not only sometimes color trace and realizing that, you know, you adding in a, a little bit of a different color can really help you, but that, that blend going from, you know, pretty much like almost black to pure white. It really is difficult. It's a big challenge. Like normally I say that people can start with NMM before they've got their blending, like, you know, really dialed in because really what you want, just like, um, if you guys go and look at, at Rex's, uh, model that he linked in the chat, um, you know, he's, uh, he's definitely got some blending chops. Um, uh, and you know, but he's got, what really matters though about that is that he's nailed where his highlight and shadow placement should be. So you don't need to have great blending for NMM, but you, you, the first thing to concentrate on is understanding the light and like where the light should be falling, where your highlights and shadows are. You can get away with an awful lot knowing your highlights and shadows and nailing those and not having perfect blending. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Corby. 
yeah, it is really good to, to work in some extra colors. Uh, Sergio uh, Calvo Rubio also uh, teaches that in his classes. Um, and he's like, it doesn't matter what color. Just interrupt the gray so that it doesn't look like a black and white illustration. So, And you can be very subtle about it. You don't need much color. You just need something to pull your gray off um, into a little bit more neutral territory. So for me, I'm just using a little touches of this Moonstone Blue. Yeah, I like her breastplate, actually. I'm liking that quite a bit. Looks good. Looks pretty good in person. I may tweak it a little bit here and there, but I'm liking it right now. My biggest problem is that now the dents look like a monster face. He's winking. <laughs> now, that you, now that I've said that, you guys aren't going to be able to unsee it. Um... Yeah, I, it depends, though. I don't think a bit of the green would... For my model, I don't think green's going to work because this is going to be a snow base. So, it, unfortunately, the, the earth color is going to be white and gray. So there is going to be pretty strong reflected light. Um, but yeah, okay. So I need to totally stop the monster face there. we got to interrupt the monster face that I've seen and cannot unsee. Let's see. His face does go a little bit too far over this way, so there that dent actually stops there there and i probably can minimize that little dent a little bit still looks like a monster face dang it <laughs> yeah if i wanted it if i wanted a lot of blue like right now she does have a bit of blue highlights on her black um a little bit of bluish highlight there so uh i might be real i might be a bit stronger like with my moonstone um, other colors I've used in the past, sometimes I do go pretty strong with my blue sky, uh, which is usually I'm using ashen blue, which is more like, uh, more like this color, which I find is a really good sky color for, for sky earth. Um, and sometimes I'll even use something that's brighter, like tropical blue, which is, uh, and just mix this in with my gray. That one, that one's a good one too. Um, so both of those colors I've used, for some reason I decided to go a little bit more subtle on her, a little more monochrome, um, probably cause I'm trying, uh, to more mimic the box art for a client and he doesn't necessarily want me to get all fancy schmancy with, uh, putting extra colors and stuff, but he's also not paying me enough. <laughs> well, he's paying me decently now. Let's not, let's not, uh, let's not say he's not paying me decently. So, but yeah, um, if I was doing grass down here, for sure, green or brown. I, I tend to go with browns a lot, unless there's a lot of grass or, or vegetation. Um, I'm going to be working on a paladin bust, uh, templar bust. With a, I'm going to be doing a lot of sky earth, and there's going to be a lot of like dark olivey greens in the shadows, and a lot of blue in the highlights. Um, but that's, uh, that's not a bust, so I have a lot more room to play on that one. Kind of Xandercles, right? Right? Almost. Boy George. Uh, I, I, she is a girl. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, Oceanic Blue Gray. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten the new, uh, the ReaperCon colors yet. I have to, that reminds me, I have to poke John about that at Reaper. And, uh, I had to make sure he sends me the model that he said he was going to send me, and then I have to make sure that he also throws in some paint, since I did not originally ask for paint. But you never know. You can never have too much paint, right? So I'm going to start highlighting this a little bit. The The NMM over here is so simple because it's so small, right? So really, you just got to, you've got to, the first thing I'll do is actually knock in a highlight. I need a highlight here, a little bit of a highlight down at the bottom here. I uh, probably want my highlight to go more toward the front of this. Back here on the back of the gun, it's going to be real subtle. I'm um, probably just going to bring up, like, the little panel. And if my paint's not coming off my brush, I don't have enough water in it. But I tend to generalize on NMM on very small surfaces. It may not be strictly, strictly realistic. It just has to look right. It has to look right enough. Um, yeah, math the file. I mean, it, a lot of people like David, my boyfriend, uh, he paid for a lot of very top notch painters to do commissions for him so that he could get better when he was working on becoming a better painter. He essentially found people that he really admired and he got as many people as he could to do commissions for him. 
Um, but you also, I mean, in this case, this particular person who is, has me doing this one, uh, he's a decent painter on his own, but he likes to have really good looking leader models and he really likes this model and wanted non-metallic metal and he doesn't have the skill set for NMM. So in that case, he's, uh, he's got money and so he's willing to pay me to do a couple of leader models for him here and there. So it, it varies by the person, right? I mean, I used to take commissions when I was doing eBay. I would get a lot of commissions from like doctors and lawyers who like, uh, you know, they loved to game, but they didn't have the time to paint. And so they'd hire me to paint a lot of stuff for their armies. Um, and sometimes I'd get a request for a D and D character. Yeah. I still need a little bit more water. Thin down my white until it's like obedient. Oh, Clouded Sea. That's a lovely color. I made that color. That's an Anne color. Yeah, it is pretty. John is a good guy. Oh, no. What has Andrew Please been saying? Oh, yeah, the young boy George thing. Okay, yeah. Yes, and now I won't unsee that either. I mean, really, when I put it, she's got kind of her hair is in a bun at the back of her head. I haven't done it yet. Her hair is uh, auburn, I think. Redhead. But totally, Boy George could have any hair color he wanted. So, you know, the 80s. As long as she doesn't, like, start singing Karma Chameleon, we're okay. All right. It's a little bit of a back reflection there. A little bit of a tight reflection there. When you get these little areas, you really don't need to do a lot. You just need to suggest. You need to put enough there to show that you aren't ignoring it. And we'll put a little bit of a shadow under her hand here on the bottom of this gun. But yeah, Methophile, I would say, uh, I mean, I'm going to be selling a couple of things on my Patreon coming up, like the Dark Elf bust, and uh, I fully expect that whoever buys that, you know, is going to be buying it for a reference figure. But some people also collect. Hey, Soulway Studios, thanks for the follow. I think I'm getting close to, well, no, I've got a little time yet. I tend to go, uh, I go until my dog needs to go out. <laughs> so that's how long I paint on stream. And usually she goes out uh, in about a little more, a little less than a half an hour from now. But if she has kind of a tail emergency, I might have to rush her out. She is an old dog. Um, and so when she's got to go, she's got to go. I tend to do a lot of little spot highlights in little areas like this. Just a tiny little, little bits to outline some of these panels, bring out some of these details. And uh, suggest highlights where appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Clouded Sea actually was made by me ages ago, but then it was canceled. And uh, it was one of those colors where when it got canceled, a bunch of painters rose up howling en masse um, because they loved it. So uh, it's nice to see. It made, a, it made a comeback as a Reapercon color one year because I got so many requests for it. Uh, and it's good to see that it's coming back with the pirate theme this year for Reapercon. All right. A little bit more of a spot white. Uh, to bring that out and I need to do a shadow under it. It is so pretty. It's such a pretty color. You know, though, in a lot of ways, the painting community has really evolved for Reaper um, in the time between when I put that out, when it was canceled and now. Like a lot of people, when we first started, they were mostly looking for bright colors. They didn't really know how to use muted colors or, you know, really understand like how useful they could be. But now I see a lot of people being very attracted to muted colors, uh, which I really like. It's a nice way to switch it up. A lot of people still really like dark tones too, but it's, uh, I just see people like spreading out more. It's not like, like we used to have like our top sellers were all the, all the really like simple bright colors and um, it's not always, you know, the other cell, the other colors don't sell badly anymore. You still see the bright colors go a little bit better. And part of that is that you can do a lot with bright colors, right? For mixing and things. So ah, I need to drill out that gun. All right. Well, mental note, need to drill out the gun. Forgot to drill out the nozzle. I will have to do that at least a little bit. I'm not somebody who's going to drill the gun barrel like way back in there, but I will actually like drill a little divot and at least make a little divot. Um, it never used to bother me, but I had so many friends who were sticklers for drilling out gun barrels that now it bothers me. <laughs> ah. 
sticky note to drill out the gun, right? I think I'll remember. I'm a, I'm so close to finishing her. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on me remembering this one. Let's see, sword S word. This is one of those easy swords, sabers. You know, with the flat side and the bevel. So simple to do NMM on these. Let's see. Let's do some. Get our get a get a layer down. I like to do wet blending on NMM with more um, when I've got the surface for it. So I'll just pick up a little bit of my white, a little bit of my pale blue. Oops, need to remix that up. Sometimes wet blending is how to save your sanity on a silver and steel NMM. Because it can enable you to get a smooth blend. Oh, I think I missed a mold line. Or I, got, I have a little tiny remnant of mold line there. Pardon me while I grab my knife. I think I just have a tiny bit. I missed it at the beginning. Just going to scrape gently. Yeah, I did have a little tiny bit there. I don't have a lot of fear about doing this to a paint job. I would rather catch it now than have highlighted it and shaded it and then have to repaint it. There. Much better. There. Could have used the uh, GW mold line removal tool too, but I didn't. That's in that's in a box in the drawer, so. Trouble you have with NMM. Yes, that is, I mean, that's the key, right? Giggling Geek at You've got you, you got to figure out how light is actually bouncing around. That is, that's why I, we tend to call it a conceptual technique because it's more about the idea of the thing than it is about any technical execution. It's wrapping your head around it. It took me a long time. The, um, and actually it was the Lord of the Rings movies that did it for me <laughs> because, uh, Peter Jackson uses so much good lighting in those. And there's a lot of armor and weapons and the one ring, of course. And so, uh, Hey there, dog father. How's it going? Hello, Arathu. Welcome. Hey, Monster Slayer boss. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, Arathu, nice to meet you. I'm Anne. Uh, normally, I uh, paint for Reaper Miniatures, who does, you know, mostly D&D figures and gaming figures for RPGs. Uh, but today, I was just deciding to work on a bit of commission work that I had in my on my plate. Uh, so we're working on the female commissar uh, from Games Workshop for Imperial Guard, Imperial Guard and we're doing her uh, silver and steel, kind of uh, the, the gun bits, the non-metallic metal, um, and I'm working on the sword now. She's got some plates on her feet. I have to make note not to forget. And Giggling You Get is all excited to see Arathu. Yes. Yeah. Shiny objects and a torch. Yep, that works too. Yeah, or even, I mean, like I say, I tell people all the time, if you've got just an over overhead desk lamp that you paint under, just putting the model under that, just one strong light source and just kind of looking at where the strongest highlights go. Like that's how we did, um, especially for bigger models, like the bust, the samurai bust. Like that's how uh, my mentoree and I figured out these highlights here on the breastplate that look so right is like we actually just took a strong directional and we marked with white paint the spot highlights where the strongest highlights were and then we started blocking in other stuff. So that's totally legal and gives you a very good response, uh, very good uh, idea of where the highlights fall. We did the same thing up here um, to see where these highlights were falling uh, to mark them out so that we could do the same thing with the bronze here around the edges of the shoulder pit. So totally fair. All is fair in NMM. <laughs> if you like light and physics, you are going to get to the NMM. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, overhead light's good. All right, so let's see here. We want to do a shadow. Remember always the shadow next to the light to make it look shiny. And on swords, it, the, that highlight can be so thin. Sometimes you just want to kind of fade it into a bar of sorts um, and alternate. Like maybe I want to go kind of with a shadow here. But the upper surface, you never want to be as dark either. So you kind of have to watch that. You kind of have to watch the upper versus lower surface. Make sure that your shadows are a little lighter on the upper surface and that your highlights are a little darker on the lower surface. Let's see. I'm going to introduce some of my blue, my moonstone blue here also, because I want that, um, 
I want that color in my NMM. I'm going to use the side of my brush just to catch the edge of the blade. And I'm going to do that again with uh, pure white. Do, 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 do. So it's already looking shiny. I hardly did anything to it. That's what I love. Sometimes I just love NMM. Like there are times when there's a lot of NMM. Like I will admit when I started painting this model and I looked at all this gold, I was like, oh my God. Um, and it killed me a little bit inside. But <laughs> now I'm to the point where I have very little NMM left to do. So now I'm like excited and enjoying it more. So a little bit of shine. I want to really bring up at least one nice bright area. And keep it a little bit darker down there, I think. Well, you know, any I, I am a firm believer in that if you are interested in a topic as a human being, if it really like gets you interested, so if you are interested in light and physics, you will you'll find a way. You will learn it because it'll be exciting for you to learn it. It'll be fun and interesting for you to learn it. And probably the biggest problem with the way that we are educated is that we don't put enough emphasis on fun and interesting. Um, I think kids can learn anything if they're interested in it. Alrighty. So we got dark there, so I probably need to bring up an under reflection down there on this side of the blade. Not going to be as bright as the top of the blade, but it's definitely going to be reflecting a bit. And again, I wish I had more colors in the, if I did have more colors in the surrounding environment, if he hadn't asked for just dark gray and white because snow base, um, I would be able to introduce some of the colors in the environment in these shadow bands here. This is my reflected light. I am looking forward to working on my uh, Templar bust and really getting colors in the shadows and highlights because I'll have so much metal to work on. And it's so much fancy metal too. It's the one with the lion shoulder pad. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in that stuff, then you've got a real incentive to kind of learn non-metallic metal. Like, because it, it, it'll be fun for you because you'll be just like, okay, this is interesting and fun because I need to learn how light bounces off of metal. And it's not super hard. It just takes a little bit of thought and experimentation. So I uh, think that NMM is very, very teachable, very learnable. Um, and a lot of the times on 28 millimeters, you aren't really going real realistic with it anyway. Uh, you're trying to make it look good. You're trying to make everything show up and look correct. You're trying to, you know, make it look like there's stuff reflecting. When you get into big models, that's when you've got um, stuff that's going to keep you honest. Um, and if it doesn't look right, it's going to really, yeah, I need to mess around with that. That's not looking right. Speaking of not looking right. But like the Templar model that I'm talking about that I want to do, when you are doing something like this, here, let me get back, back up, back up, back up. When you're doing something like that shoulder pad and this armor, if you do not nail how it's good, how it should look, it will not look right. So I think that the little models are a lot more forgiving than the big stuff is. So big busts like that, you, uh, you've got to be on, on your game. Yeah, if they look too real, then you don't like it. Yeah, that's totally, I mean, it, everything has a genre, right? And so, yeah, GW are meant to be over the top. I'm probably doing her a little bit more realistic just because it tends to be my style. So, well, that and she's Imperial Guard. I think if you're going to do gonna do realistic to any GW army, Imperial Guard's probably it. Like my orcs were really over the top and my Eldar are freaking iridescent. So, <laughs> so I definitely don't go real. <laughs> with all of it. The minute it starts, you know, maybe break it down. If you struggle with the, uh, the NMMs, try breaking it down and just doing one area. Like I think breastplates are some of the easy ones and so are straight swords. Um, those are, those are s rather simpler to try NMM on. Um, <laughs> 2002, 
orc commissar. Yeah, I believe it. Man, and that's around when I used to work for them, and I don't remember that model, but and there's so much going on. I worked for Games Workshop from, let me see, I think it was 2001, 2002? Around there. I, have, I moved down to Texas and started working for Reaper in 2003. And then I, after 17 years, uh, came out here to be with my guy. But happily, Reaper still has me as an employee. I'm just doing all this Twitch stuff. Alright, so we got some kind of little reflections and highlights. I'm going to get the bottom edge of this sword also with a not a pure white. But there is going to be snow, and so there's going to be reflections. So I am going to get the uh, that underside of the blade just with the side of my brush real gentle with very little paint on it just to hit that edge highlight and bring that up so that it looks. And I could I need to go a little bit. There needs to be a little bit more blending in there. It's not bad, though. It needs a little bit more. Now I'm just being picky. And I also think I've gone too pale with this. So I'm going to grab some of my gray. And uh, dull this down just a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. And there is a bit of blue up there, so I'm happy with that. I need to bring in my highlights a little bit more. I need to blend the top of the sword. Blending the top of the blade is always so silly because it's it's like on a normal sword, you would not have this huge thick blade. So you kind of have to like, you can't go realism there. You've just got to kind of go, all right, well, it's, um, it's a big chunky sword. So I'm going to pretend to know how I highlight it. So let's do this. I usually start dark and uh, go lighter as I go down. And I try to wet blend it so that I get smooth transitions. And as it goes closer to the hilt, I tend to bring up the light because uh, it's more, it's uh, less perpendicular. It's more, we're going to catch the light at the bottom, I think. So doing a little bit of wet blend just to get that transition in there. I might do a little bit of variation on light and dark in here, but not too much. I don't want people to really look at the top of the sword because it is something that wouldn't really exist in real life. Or if it did, it would be so narrow, you wouldn't even see anything on it. So I tend to try to keep that, those kind of improbable areas that exist because of molding issues rather than uh, realistic um, construction. I try to minimize them and make them just kind of not a factor. Not really. Distract. Good night, Jetta. Yes, it is me. I am I am painting a Games Workshop model for once in, once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, I painted a GW model. Though, like I was telling them earlier, uh, I do have a um, uh, Storm, 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 Storm. The Storm Thing. Storm Things. Eternals. Um, I have one of those to paint for Golden Demons. Mostly because I really like the mount. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. I mean, my guy has been playing a lot of Path of Exile lately, and I'm just like, go do it, guy. <laughs> go do it, David. Um, he feels bad about it, but it's really just, uh, it's like, well, I'm like, if you're doing that, I have time to do my stuff. So, you know, it's not like we have to be joined at the hip all the time. Um, I mean, it's nice when you have a hobby that's your own and then they have a hobby that's their own and you can still it's not it doesn't mean you don't love each other that you don't do everything together plus i mean let's face it like painting 40k or painting miniatures in general is a pretty cool hobby i mean it's artistic it's creative i don't think i'd ever complain if my guy had uh, a creative hobby that he really liked to do and even if i wasn't into it i would still encourage him as it, as it stands, though, my, my boyfriend is also a, a top-level miniature painter, so <laughs> we we mostly, like, throw our models at each other and, like, say, critique this. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I hate this. <laughs> Although lately he's, uh, 
he hated he was hating his current project for a while and that's why he got seriously into path of exile for a while but uh, now he's back on it with his latest uh, competition piece which is cool all right Well, yeah, if you're spending more time at home, then that's a plus for her, right? So, yeah, my my um, Stormcast Eternal is uh, a mage that I put him on a Hippogriff instead of a Drake. Because uh, I really love the Griffs, the Rift Chargers. I love them. So I did a conversion um, to convert him so that he would seat, uh, so I could kind of swap parts and kit bash. Because Games Workshop loves that. I mean, their models really are, are fun for that, too, since plastic's easy to work with. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and exactly. He'll he'll be over there playing Path of Exile, giggling geek at, and I'll be over here working on my commission or whatever and, you know, hanging out, right? Just hanging out. Oh, she likes to do paper crafts. Cool. <laughs> yeah, well, especially if you're in a GW. It is not cheap. It is not cheap. But the painting hobby isn't cheap in general. But as long as you're painting and you're, you're like playing with the stuff and you're having enjoyment out of it, if you have the money, the nice thing about Games Workshop, though, and I speak from, uh, I speak from experience, is that in various times over the past years where I've been maybe not as interested in the game, I've been able to liquidate my models for a fair amount of money afterwards while I get out of it, and then when I get back in, I've got cash to, to spend, um, you know, on the models again. So it is a hobby that if you do choose to get out of it, at least you can get part of your money back. Um, at least in my experience. And not all hobbies can say that. So even though it's expensive, you could always think of it as, as an investment. <laughs> oh, Slanesh Demons. Yeah, they're nice models. Oh, it, it, okay, not all demons, right. Yes, done a few conversions because Hippogriff. Yes, I agree with the, the Hippogriff uh, reason. Yeah, that's good. That's good. The back of the sword is dark and it's going to just kind of disappear um, when the eye looks at it, which is what I want. I missed I missed a little bit of my blade here. That was a little bit too strong, but I can bring my shadow back in. Usually um, when it's it's NMM is, and it's on this narrow surface, you're going to futz a bit. Expect not to get it perfect the first time. There's going to be futzing. There will always be futzing. Especially if you want to do a really nice job on the mini. Got, a, got very light there, and I lost some of my blue. This is a downside of using Moonstone, is that since it's a very subtle blue that has a bit of gray in it, it's easy to lose that blue tone that I'm looking for in the metal. Oh, it's almost, it's a 350 for me, so pretty soon it's time to take the dog out. Yeah, the cat method of hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all cool. Like, sometimes I just sit and read and he plays computer games and we're both, like, happy with that. I mean, I like not having a really kind of codependent relationship. I like that we can give each other space. Like, I go and take my walk in the evenings and he, you know, stays home and does whatever. And I get my me time and he gets his hip him time and it's uh, good, right? Healthy relationship. Our us. I much prefer this to other relationships I've been in where they wanted to go everywhere with me and they wanted me to go everywhere with them. All right. Which is funny because I'm a dog person. You'd think I would err on the dog side of relationships and not the cat, cat side. Although I do love kitties too. I do not have a kitty currently. All right. So that's looking. I need to get to the underside of the sword, but the top side's looking good. I should at least block in the feet because they're going to be super easy to block in because they're rounded cylinders. Hey, Cuthbert Cure. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, so we're getting we're getting our NMM blocked in. So I do need to do the underside of the sword, and that's going to be a little bit weird because it's tilted toward the ground. But since this is going to be a snow base... Um, oh, thanks, Cool Timer. Thanks for the follow. Uh, since this is going to be a snow base eventually, a lot of light's going to be reflecting up at the underside of that sword. So I need to keep that in mind when I'm painting it. So it won't be very dark. Uh, even though it's turned away from the light. Oh, thanks for the follow, Arathu. Or are you Arathu or Arathu? I don't know. Either way, it's cool sounding. Don't care. <laughs> hey, not much. I'm actually, I'm getting toward the end of the stream at this point. Hey, Scholagrammer. Thanks. Thanks for the follow. Um, getting toward the end of the stream because I got to take my puppy out. Or my, I could say my old dog. She's 12 and a half. 
Um, and uh, four o'clock is her definite must go out time. So I'm out on the West Coast. So uh, I'm blocking in some highlights on the sil um, NMM, NMM steel on the feet here. Uh, so I want to at least get my highlights kind of blocked in so I can continue working on this later. I'm pretty happy with all the work I've done on this, though. I'll put this up on my YouTube, on my Painting Big YouTube, guys, afterwards. Um, but yeah, the breastplate we did today. Uh, we were working on the sword there. We were doing little bits of uh, light on the pistol. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, how you get in trouble? Trouble has come to find me, everybody. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, we're doing um, non-metallic metal steel. So pretty much uh, using shades of gray uh, with a little bit of color mixed in, um, some near black and uh, pure white to suggest metallics where there are no metallics. I like this technique, especially on a model like this with uh, all this detailing because it lets me really control where the shadows and highlights go so I can make sure that all the details stand out. Metallic paint, although I, I do use metallics, I usually use them on bigger pieces, like Mr. Grumpy here. Mr. Grumpy has a metallic breastplate, uh, as you can see. I really like metallics on big models, big busts and stuff. I find they really come into their own. I love the micro detailing and abrasions and uh, soiling and corrosion you can do on them and how real you can make them look. But on a little model like this, I'd be afraid that I wouldn't be able to... Uh, bring out all these really tight little details, these tiny little details that are sculpted on. So I ended up going NMM. Thanks, Trouble. But yeah, Kiri will have to go out soon. So we'll, uh, I'll try to at least black in highlights on these feet. So on cylinders, just like on the breastplate, you're kind of doing um, the breastplate in miniature when you go down here to the plates on top of her feet. So you're gonna do a top highlight which is a lot like that. But since these are just straight up, kind of kind of flat down here, so I'm actually uh, making kind of a wavy line, kind of doing a highlight at the top that's broader, then I'm narrowing my line and making it a little irregular, and then I'm gonna hit another highlight at the toe. Uh, and that alone actually uh, kind of suggests shininess. That's one way you can kind of test yourself when you're trying to play with NMM. Um, if you do start with a, with a darker color, and then take some really thinned white or light blue or whatever you're using for your highlight and just kind of sketch in highlights like this. Sketch in the highlight and kind of back off and say, does that look kind of shiny, you know, in a comic book kind of way. And if it looks kind of shiny like there, then you're probably right on, like keep going. And then you just got to start blending. So here I'll also pick up a bit of a highlight as it comes down around here. It'll start picking up highlights from the surrounding environment. Um, especially if this is going to be snow down here, which it will be. So there'll definitely be some light on this little edge here of this metal plate. So we'll definitely pop a highlight there. Hey, Balrog. Thank you for the follow. So yeah, so that's what we're thinking of is you got to think how light falls. So light falls and on a cylinder, it's going to fall in a line. So look at the ferrule of the brush. Hey, Ingress. So if you see this, this is of course a cylinder and the light falls down it in a straight line. Uh, with a little bit of variance where it hits these little indents, right? Then then you see it kind of bulge and distort. And so that's what we're doing here. You know, we're kind of making it distort a bit at the uh, ends of each of these plates. And then we're doing mostly a straight line down the middle. And then in addition, you need that reflective quality of the metal. So that's why since there'll be snow down here, it's going to be light falling, a lot of white light bouncing back up. We're going to do those little highlights on the outside edge, just like I did down here on the shiny boot. Uh, to make sure that light looks like it's bouncing back. Brass etch. Uh, brass etch is a real thin blast brass plating that's stamped. Are we live? We should be live. Yeah, I'm live. Yeah, we are in fact live beginning to the end. Yes, yes. Yeah, but we all... I think I think a lot of people, though, are, at the work, are kind of in your boat, right? Because, I mean... I started out just painting D&D figures and uh, then got into Warhammer when I was working at a game store in Madison, Wisconsin. And um, I was just painting wood elves, but I decided I wanted them to look as good as, you know, to really look good, right? Especially the big guys, especially my leaders. Uh, and I just started picking up White Dwarf Magazine and that's where I first saw Golden Demons. And I'm like, I bet I could do this because I was an art student. I was like, these people are doing amazing stuff with these models, right? Just crazy inspirational stuff. Uh, and that's what planted the seed in my head for getting better. So, I mean, I started out just gaming for painting and to please myself. 
and then decided that I wanted to push it. I wanted to see how good I could get on models that I really cared about. Um, and yeah, now I'm a multi, you know, national and international award-winning painter who worked for Reaper for 17 years. Uh, so, you know, it's, it takes you various places, right? But you, I mean, you can go as far as you want and nobody should look down on you just because maybe you want to paint most of your models to a nice clean gaming paint job. That's like worth admiration by itself. Just that's stick to itiveness. An army takes a long time to paint, even when you're doing a simple paint job. Looks like clock, but is confused. Yeah, it's actually, it's four my time and it's six central time. And that means it's time to take Kiri out. Um, so anyway, guys, I, I'm glad to meet the new of you, the new people uh, that I haven't ever seen before. I do a lot of different subject matter on my personal stream here, but it usually does go right around this time. So it'll start around uh, 4.30 central and go till around 6, 6 central USA time. Um, and usually just in the middle of the week, because I try not to overlap Reaper's streaming time. And on Friday, Reaper has a lot of shows. Uh, so I will probably not be on tomorrow afternoon. But uh, yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday for sure. And then pra is, uh, th on Thursdays if I feel like hanging out, right? And we'll just do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, but yeah, so welcome to the stream. Thanks for following me, everybody. Uh, and uh, thanks for my regulars who see me all the time. Remember, remember... Um, that uh, Reaper tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Central is going to be my show on twitch.tv slash Reaper Miniatures. And we are doing an AMA. So a bunch of people dropped questions in the Reaper Discord for me to answer. And we're also doing a giveaway. We picked one of the big Reaper dragons and we're going to give away three of them in the course of the show. So so definitely show up tomorrow morning. Okay, you guys? All right. Kiri is Kiri's getting restless. So I'm going to go. I hope you all had a great time. Have a fantastic afternoon, evening, whatever time zone you're in. All right? And signing off.